Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. We are recording this week. I just got into San Francisco a short while ago and have a couple of client meetings today, which is always one of my very favorite things to do. Meeting with a couple of clients, uh, another one in the morning, Friday, and then heading right back home. So uh, literally 24-hour trip, but that's why we're recording from here. And it's a good time to be recording because yesterday, Wednesday, was the uh, day of the Federal Open Market Committee meeting announcement and then uh, the quarterly meeting in which Chairwoman Yellen does a press conference. So the bulk of our written Dividend Cafe this week and most of the comments I'm going to make here today on our video center around the Fed and, and central bank policy, the impact to markets and direction uh, that we want to take position-wise. Um, I, I commented in the written Dividend Cafe that from 2009 until uh, really the election season into 2016, as around the primary uh, began, um, the reality is that the central bank was the primary story in, in finan financial media narrative. It, it very likely was the primary story in the undercurrents of global capital markets as well, but it was certainly what captured the bulk of the airwaves, bulk of attention. Sometimes some of the coverage was somewhat incoherent and I think misguided. But the point being that there was this big and understandable emphasis in three different rounds of quantitative easing, QE1, 2, and QE3. The so-called taper tantrum when at the time Chairman Ben Bernanke talked about tapering back the quantitative easing, and what took place there, that sort of threatening, which was in the summer of 2013. The zero interest rate policy, what we called ZERP, that lasted for that entire time, all the way up until the very first interest rate increase, uh, which was December of 2015, a measly quarter of a point. Um, so you had an extended period of unbelievable monetary accommodation, both in the United States and then as we got into the 2012 and later period, it began dramatically so in Europe as well, continues to this day, and the Bank of Japan went full-blown nuclear in their monetary accommodation, all the way to the point of their central bank becoming a huge buyer of their equity markets. Um, with uh, money that didn't exist. So you have um, a significant factor of controlling credit and controlling the money supply from the central banks of the world as a means of administering monetary policy and fundamentally from their viewpoint to help kickstart the economy. Kickstarts normally last um, a very short period of time. Uh, both in the way that we would use the term out and about in our lives and really even in terms of precedent of central bank kickstarting um, this multi, multi, multi year of accommodation that we're seeing in our Fed is certainly unique to American monetary history. Well, then we got into the election season, as I said, and the political realm really took over. It's a lot more fun. It was a wild primary on both sides of the aisle. And then we ended up with a, a, a pretty wild presidential election result. And, and there's been no um, uh, slowdown in a lot of this sort of drama and sometimes entertainment value, um, but certainly kind of political volatility since uh, the new administration, the Trump administration, took office. This week, to me, marks an interesting point. I feel as if the monetary story and the central bank story is about to become the prominent story again. Um, that does not mean that I believe they're going to heavily accelerate this normalizing, getting interest rates higher, getting their balance sheet lower, ridding themselves of this massive amount of bonds that they have purchased since the financial crisis, and, done, and put on their balance sheet, doing so with uh, money that didn't exist. That's what quantitative easing is. So Chairwoman Yellen yesterday provided a lot of uh, color about their plans. They do, in fact, intend to go forward with uh, peeling back of their balance sheet. And I've, I've gotten into this before. I know a lot of you don't even know what I'm talking about right now, but it's important. The Fed is not planning on taking all these bonds and selling them off into the market, which would be a very... Um, it would represent a tightening action. It would represent a rather aggressive form of tightening and constriction of credit and monetary uh, and money supply. Rather, what they're doing is stopping 
the reinvestment of a very small portion of the bonds that are on their balance sheet so that rather than continuing, it has the net effect of taking uh, those things down through time. So it's not proactively selling, it's just letting things roll off through time, bringing the balance sheet down. We think they need to bring it down over a trillion dollars. We think they're gonna take five or six years to do it. So um, calling it a snail's pace of expected, normal, expected normalization uh, is really an insult to snails, which move <laughs> a lot quicker than that. I just made that joke up right now. I, um, I believe that there's a legitimate question that a lot of people would have as to why the Fed is looking to tighten right now when their own inflation targets are so low. I, for one, am not critical of it because while I very heartily agree that their inflation targets are below what they want, I don't believe in their inflation targets. And I believe that this excessively accommodative monetary policy um, produces and encourages malinvestment and, and, and distorts risk pricing. However, that's not their motive. I think that the reason why they need to normalize to some degree is that their adherence to what economists call the Phillips curve. It, it is, the um, in a very simplistic summary, this belief that with unemployment this low, it, it forces the inflation curve up. I don't believe in the Phillips curve. Um, very few economists that I admire and respect believe in it either. But the reality is that the Fed is filled with PhD holding economists who do believe in it. And, and what Janet Yellen said yesterday was, we um, believe that unemployment should be creating greater inflation, this low unemployment level. Our models tell us that inflation should be coming. There is not inflation, and yet we believe the models will eventually be proven right. So um, I have to uh, accommodate for what I expect they will do, not what I think they should do. Bottom line, we expect they will raise rates about a quarter of a point um, in the December meeting, Not no, no more than that, obviously. Um, a, a month ago, it was about a 30% chance that they would do so in the Fed funds futures market. As of this morning here, it's uh, in the 70% range. So her comments yesterday telegraphed to the bond market. She's a big believer in telegraphing what that she wants to do. Um, and so the market is, uh, is pricing that in. Equities didn't really move. They went down a couple points uh, during her press conference yesterday and ended up 30 or 40 points in the Dow, moved around in the same range as I speak here now. We're still right around all-time highs in the Dow and S&P 500. So going forward, if we believe there'd be aggressive tightening and surprising tightening, it would impact the way we allocate around risk. But we don't believe so. European yields are going to hold the Fed down in terms of bond yields and to the degree that the market sees rates going higher and believes that um, inflation expectations, which have never gotten above 2%, will themselves come down, we think it could have the contrarian or opposite effect of even lowering bond yields. So uh, the notion of getting right what the Fed's going to do is hard to do. The notion of getting right what the market is going to do in response to what the Fed does is complete guesswork and anyone who tells you otherwise is wrong. So we're not going to practice guesswork. We're going to be very disciplined, very balanced, and frankly lean a bit on the cautious side, both in our fixed income interest rate uh, uh, positioning and in our equity and risk positioning. So that's the story this week. It's a little more heady stuff. We're talking about um, the boring topics of monetary policy and central banking, but key issues going on. And look, Trump hasn't done anything too crazy all week, and uh, uh, media isn't going after a lot of political stories this week. And of course, uh, we're not in earnings season, so it's uh, maybe a nice refresher to come back to monetary policy. That's our story for the week. We will be uh, back in touch next week, uh, very likely filming uh, from New York City, where our annual due diligence trip will be beginning at the end of next week. Thank you for listening to Dividend Cafe. Reach out with questions anytime. And I really, really uh, appreciate all of you that continue to give the Bonson Group your faith and trust. We are uh, determined to be good stewards of such.